Welcome to ASG. Uh, in this uh, video tutorial we're going to walk through how to create uh, a star and starless image and how to combine your RGB layers for narrow band into a nice Photoshop document that gives you really good control over your stars. Now uh, you may have looked at my online guide and I basically have three phases that you walk through when you do your narrowband imaging. First you're going to stack them and I talk about using an astral pixel processor for that process. Uh, this is phase two that we're going to be looking at which is separating the stars and the nebula and so we want to talk about how to do that and then phase three will carry over into another video on how to actually start processing in Photoshop uh, but this first this kind of middle step um, is in between the stacking and Photoshop and really we do this I do this anyway I don't I don't know if a lot of people do this this way uh, but I like to separate those stars from the nebula if I'm doing that kind of imaging because then I have full control over what I want to do there um, with them and if you try ever try to stretch or you know adjust your levels um, with your stars that will just lead to really big bloating of stars there's just no way to avoid that uh, because the, the, the data is just integrated with it and StarNet does a really good job of removing that so we'll take a look at that process um, but I haven't seen a lot of videos on how people really are separating the stars a lot of them are just creating starless images um, just for art and things like that but it's really a powerful tool before you even start processing um, and getting to that step so step one is this piece we've already done uh, we're going to take a look at step two, which is running StarNet and how to combine these. So let's take a look at that. Um, I'm going to jump over here to Photoshop. This is an example of where we want to go. Uh, you can see I just have a simple Photoshop document here, but I've got my stars separated from my nebula, and they're in really good shape. And we also have, when we do this process, control over how big our stars get, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people really struggle with that because they start stretching out the nebula and all of a sudden the stars just keep getting bigger and bigger or they try to be really careful with the stretching and you really don't have to be um, if you use this method um, so I think it's a really good tool for people to use so um, first things first if you haven't ever got StarNet uh, you need to go out to SourceForge and download it it's free and I like to install it into my C drive just directly. Uh, I just put it right on the C drive within StarNet because I don't like to bury it in folders and have to type in a million paths when you run it. StarNet is a command line tool so it's just a simple tool here. You're gonna see these files inside there and what you do is you're gonna have your TIFF file and your TIFF file if I show you this one is going to be your you can do this in RGB or mono. Um, in this example, you can see I have it already in RGB combined. So I'm going to show you real quick how to create an RGB file out of TIFFs if you've never done it. Because if you create them in Deep Sky Stacker, your uh, RGBs are going to be monochrome. So you're going to have separate HA, OII, and your SI sulfurs are all going to be separate. And so to do that, let me show you real quick. So I'm going to put these, oops, I've got three files here I'm going to put into Photoshop. So if you have your separate hydrogen, oxygen, sulfurs in separate files, all you have to do to combine these is you just control A and control C. You just copy that whole thing. It's just a gray image and you're going to create a new one, but you're going to make sure that it's an RGB colored uh, image, 16-bit RGB. Okay. And, and all you do is you just come over here and you'll notice I'm in my layers panel and I can paste it here. Um, it's just a gray image. Um, we just don't want to paste it into the layers. So I'm going to delete that. You just want to go to channels and all you do is with the different color palettes you just select which channel you want and you paste it in there. So this one's in green. And I can just go over here to oxygen, control A, control C and I'll jump over here oxygen is usually always blue so I'll paste it on that channel 
and then here's my sulfur image. I'll just copy it. Come over here, and that's I'm going to put it in red. This is the Hubble SHO palette. Uh, once you have these pasted, these gray images, you can just turn on RGB, and that's your color image. So that's what we're trying to get to at this point. Now, if you use Astro Pixel Processor, it's already done this for you because it has a combined tool. Um, sometimes you have to zoom way in on stars, especially coming out of Deep Sky Stacker. Um, zoom in and you got to move these layers around so that the stars actually align. Sometimes you'll see the blue channel over here and the green channel over here and red down here and you got to make the stars align. Whereas if you do it in Astro Pixel Processor it will be aligned automatically. So this is the first thing I do. I get my RGB image and then I will come in here and I will crop it and get down to a good section that you want. Okay, I got a little bit of stuff up there, but you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this so that we are on the same page here. That's how you create your RGB out of those three images. In this case, I've got one already kicked out right here from uh, Astro Pixel Processor, and you can see it's not stretched very much. I don't like to stretch it at this point. Um, I will come in here and, and often I will crop this and get a rough um, estimate uh, of what I want before I run through StarNet. It just gets rid of all this extra outside stuff. So at this point it would be a good idea to go ahead and save this. Um, don't stretch it. Don't run levels adjustments. Um, we want those stars in their most natural uh, format right now to begin with and let StarNet take them away and then we'll deal with them in, in Photoshop later but I like to leave the data as original as possible so you're going to have to save this as a TIFF file okay uh, StarNet only runs on TIFF files so you can see here I've got it as a TIFF okay and so let's go ahead and, and just run process uh, uh, StarNet so what we'll do uh, you can just launch in Windows by typing in CMD um, at the start menu and that will start your command line and I just CD to the StarNet directory and that's why I like to keep it just at StarNet because then I don't have to type in a huge long path to it okay and to run StarNet it's really simple you've got an RGB StarNet or you have a mono StarNet so if you do have just your HAs and you want to run StarNet on that um, you certainly can. Uh, in this case I've got an RGB color um, image so I'm just going to run RGB starnet plus plus dot exe and then it wants the name of the file and what are you going to call it when you're done so I would just type in rosette hubble dot tiff that's the name of my image and then I'm going to do hubble starless dot tiff and you can see I already have one in here. Um, I'm going to move that out of there. And once you hit start, it's going to go ahead and run through that process. And it can take anywhere from 5-10 minutes, depending on your, your, uh, your computer speed. It could take an hour. I don't know what slow laptops might take. But this process will go ahead and run that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while it runs, and then I'll show you the results. Okay, so we're back. Um, that process finished running. Uh, what we've done now is we have our regular starred image, and then now it is kicked out a starless image. So we're going to go ahead and open those up now in Photoshop. Uh, we can go ahead and close our command line. And what we should have in Photoshop now is these two images. You can see here this is just our original. I didn't crop this one. I should have. Uh, but you can see that they're identical and you want to make sure that you do keep them identical because we're going to be subtracting one from the other. Um, you don't want to have one cropped and you know and then have this one over here not cropped or whatever. Uh, keep them framed exactly the same whichever you do. And again it's important not to stretch these before you do this. I, I think it, it turns out better uh, if you leave the original data and then worry about stretching later because you'll be able to control that. And that's the whole purpose of doing this is we want to be able to control that stretch without the stars. So 
Now we'll take a look at how do you get these into layers and separate them because right now you have the nebula but you don't have just the stars and you can see that there's no way in StarNet to run just give me the stars it only gives you the nebula so this is a really simple tool we've used this in the photo industry and web design and a lot of stuff for many years um, it's a way of removing if you've got two images you can simply subtract one from the other and you're left with the residual in this case we've got the two images we want to subtract everything but those stars and we're left with that information so what I like to do is go to my starred image here and I'm just going to call this down here I'll just call this nebula and we're going to go ahead and go to the image menu and we're going to go to apply image and here you have your two images open and so the source it says what image do you want to apply and I want to apply the starless image to it and then it says well, what what type of mode do you want to blend with and there's a couple ways of doing it here the different you have difference and subtraction and if you use difference it just takes the exact nebula off of the other image which is fine it actually turns out that that is exactly what you want you want just your stars um, there's another way to do it here which is subtraction and I like to use subtraction because it gives you an offset so think of it as layers and you're taking that layer off but if you set the offset you can bump up into the stars a little bit and you can bump down into the nebula a little bit and this is a great way and a good step if you want to make your stars a little bit smaller uh, I know a lot of people use you know the minimum technique um, through your Photoshop <clears throat> and a filter but that uh, that is essentially what we're doing we're just cutting them off a little bit but you're doing that within an image where there's other data here we can do it and we have really good control so if I take off more of the stars you can see when I type in 40 I'm bumping up into those stars a lot if I do zero that is effectively the difference so I could just use difference if I wanted to that's exactly the same thing uh, but we're gonna you know I always like to do maybe a minus 5 or a minus 10 uh, I like to get into the stars just a little bit and I take just a little bit off and then I don't have to worry about it later um, because I've minimized them directly on this layer with just stars so if you go plus if you go you know plus 20 uh, you're actually getting into some of the nebula and some of the other light and you probably don't want to do that see how light that keeps getting um, so we're gonna do let's say a minus 10 that's essentially clipping into the stars with an offset and we're just gonna hit OK and what we have now is the stars we've got a lot of black but it is just the stars so what we need to do now is layer that on top of our nebula so we're gonna hit control A and we're going to copy all of our stars and we're going to come over to our nebula and we're just going to create a new layer and paste it on there and at first you're going to be like well it's got all the black can I just delete that uh, you don't want to delete it uh, you actually want to actually linear dodge this and so you can come in here and you can play around with all the different mixing and blending modes uh, I like to use linear dodge add uh, because it's putting it back on exactly the way it was without the black and that's exactly our data that's our star data right out of star net with no adjustments other than we clipped a little bit off with the offset so the stars are a little bit smaller than what they normally are so now we've got really good control I've got stars and I've got a background so there's my stars there's my background or my nebula we've now created a really good um, starting point for our processing so I'm gonna come ahead go ahead here I, I didn't do this before I ran star net you could okay and you can
can see it's still really dark. Uh, this is where we can start stretching um, and we'll talk about that in our processing guide. Uh, but this is just what I wanted to show is how to really get that into a separate um, RGB image and how to separate stars from nebula and do so in a really good way that you know is preserving pretty much everything. You know, if you if you were really worried about the data, you could keep the the stars and not do the subtraction with the offset. You could do just the difference, and then you've got really the exact same data. You've got the exact same stars that Starnet took off versus the nebula. Um, you've just separated them, and so great tool to use. It really gives you control. Um, I like to start my processing by just turning that off and come in, and I like to start touching up my nebula. Um, there's some really good tools in Photoshop such as the healing brush. You can get rid of a lot of these little artifacts that float around. Sometimes Starnet does a bad job with that. Um, also big halos. You can start touching up your nebula and you can keep turning on your stars to kind of see what it looks like at this point. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you too is when you come into your channels. Uh, we talked about how you create this with your, you know, your RGB. Uh, you might open one of these channels at this point um, with just really a nice raw data and you might be able to start touching these up too. Um, and I'll talk about that some in the processing guide. So at this point we've, we've done phase two. We've got a really good separation and that's what I wanted to show. Uh, this one you can see has been stretched just a little bit and uh, brought out so the curves um, at this point. but. Here's an example too. I know people might want to see this. Um, I'll just turn off the stars and if I come in here and just start messing around with the uh, levels because we want to bring this up. I got just the blue channel there. I'll come back in here. Um, let's just do a quick curve stretch just so you can kind of see how good a control you have at this point. Um, let's see. Let's go up here and do a quick curve stretch. There we are. And of course we're dealing with just the nebula here. You can kind of see what you like. I'll just hit OK. Um, you can see as we stretch that we are not touching the stars at all. And that's really what we're going for might come into our levels and get rid of some of this really brighten up the nebula and again not dealing with stars absolutely zero bloat on your stars so to me this is a pretty invaluable tool um, and a good starting point if you're trying to stretch things with your stars you're always going to get them to blow up um, unless you start doing some really complicated masks um, and color masking and you know, it's just, it's just a, a worse way of doing it, in my opinion, um, versus actually getting them separated from the start, which is what you want to do. And in real life, they are separate. Um, the stars are separate from the nebula, so it's nice to pull that and extract that and keep them separate. Um, so, okay, uh, our next guide is going to be phase three, where we actually come in here and deal with the stretching, the coloring, um, we're going to walk through how to actually um, create the image that we're looking for and how to turn something like this into something that's either the Hubble color palette, other color palettes. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the tools and techniques that I do um, in creating these images. This is an example of pulling that data and switching the colors. So it's pretty easy to go from that to this um, when we've done what we've done already. We've got to have that good base. So hopefully we'll see you in phase three. Thanks.